It's January 4th, and I'm not gonna turn this around. It may look familiar, but I'm telling you what's inside it is a lot different. So we're gonna be releasing all the information about a new cell camera next week, and uh, we've been testing it since late summer, and it's really awesome. We're gonna have all the details here very shortly, but it's January 4th, we're out here, and we're moving some cameras around off of more rut sets that have been out for a while. We're gonna check a few cameras, and we're also gonna go through them. So we're gonna see what's been on them, which I'm excited about. Let's pull this card, we'll see what's been on it, and, uh, it's been a really, really mild late season so far. This is where I've done a lot of different projects here. There's a lot of tracks, but I just don't think it's been quite cold enough for to draw in some new new deer, a lot of does. This should be a pretty good card pull. And we'll check uh, another one up there, grab our test camera. We're pulling this camera here. It's off of kind of a fun little thing. There's an old pasture fence here and I actually cut out a section of it and to make a new edge for them to follow. And I hunted the stand once and all the deer did exactly what I wanted just by making that little suggestion of them wanting to cross through. And I'll show you guys here in a minute, but that was pretty cool. And then there's made a mod, mock scrape right here off the food. Only challenging thing is you can really only hunt on a dead north, this stand in a dead north wind or an east wind. Uh, with northwest or southwest, you're gonna get busted, but still pretty darn cool. I pulled this card earlier this November there's quite a few bucks on this, but you can see here on this trail of just how they're using it. Um, there's a rub coming out of that cedar there too, and then I actually have a water hole right there. So this is simple, simple, uh, easy thing. I mean, this is full of hedge and mulberry and, and kind of gnarly, and then just clear out a little section, cut out a couple of trees, and boom, perfect 20 yard shot. So we're headed to a different farm. So we're on a good food source here. We have some cameras, but there's some that are deeper in the timber and it's pretty mild here today. So we're gonna go grab those cameras. I think this time of year with the window shortening so quickly to readjust and try to get eyeballs on the hot food sources right now. A lot of this, I set those up a long time ago and some lift twos that I'm really curious to see what's on the card poles and may even move some of these cell cameras around here just with maybe see what they're eating more of. Um, but kind of funny, you can tell the difference of where it was fertilized and where it wasn't. Uh, the bulbs were much bigger and more lush where it was fertilized. So I know it just makes a big difference. I know people try to cut corners and that's something that I've learned. You have to do all the extra steps if you want your plots to look like how they want. This was brand new. This was actually put in this year and it's a complete transformation from what it was the year before. And we put up a blind over there and uh, just a really good food source with a lot of good dense cover nearby and the deer hammer it every night. And there's hasn't been the buck that uh, that I want to fill my last buck tag on here in this food plot, but excited to go pull these cards, pull down another uh, render, relocate it to a better late season food source to see what happens. We're supposed to get a bunch of snow next week, so I'm really excited about that and some cooler temps. So like always, it's always down to the wire and now it's time to pull out of the stops, make the adjustments that you can and hopefully fill a tag this late season or at least get more intel for the following year. So we're walking up the hill to go pull this card and it's always fun this time of year when everything's canopies open. And right here, here's a bed. Our access is right there. So the first year project was to get that food pot established. Biggest project for next year is to improve the screening to get in and out undetected. This slope here can be bedded in a lot of different ways and just watch you park, walk right in. They're bedded by the food. So obviously it's still season, but late season or post season is always fun to do scouting and put together some of the clues here of what you need to do this spring, this summer and Start doing the projects that's my biggest thing i know i've wasted probably a year on just having the ideas here not actually doing them so we're gonna keep walking up this hill and pull that car i love cell cameras they're awesome there's something nostalgic of the anticipation of pulling a card going home throwing in your computer and seeing what was on there for the last couple months so i'm looking forward to that so this camera location is pretty interesting old trail that runs here flat open hardwoods food plots down there and this for whatever reason put a camera up here the first year we had the farm and it was really productive and I always tell myself I'm gonna put a cell camera here but how you guys will see the view of this it has to stay as a lift to on video mode till we come out with the next one there's a larger ag field right over there a lot of the predominant bedding is actually on uh, this farm and so you can kind of get an idea what's filtering in and out what's going to, to ag what's coming back in the morning. And then also during the rut, there's just a lot of chasing through this area too. So this will be the third year, I think, that we've had a camera here. And the historical data does come into play where where's that buck been? And then check the calendar, usually it's back again. So unfortunately the deer that 
I was hunting here, ended up getting killed November 7th, I think it was, but I'll be curious if this, uh, this buck was on camera uh, during that time period. Usually he was showing up a little bit later in November. If I had a bet, there's gonna be a sweet video of him on here and that's the way it goes. Here's a really good rut set. And even uh, during velvet, it was really productive of getting intel. Now that we're just trying to allocate our resources to make the most of this late season food sources, we're gonna move that to that type of location. And this set typically dies down as the rut dwindles. So time to redistribute. So just for perception here, that bed that was way up there that you could easily just see us walk in and out of, looking up that direction, you're gonna have to have an eagle eye to see that deer bedded. I mean, there's just a lot of thick stuff through there. And so we're gonna head out of here and I'm dying to see what's on these cards. So let's go look and see what's on these cards. All right, this is from the food plot that we we're talking about improving. So there's Richard, there's me. We'll go through this quick and see what we find. Little bucks. He's kind of funky. Looks like he broke some stuff off. He's busted up, right at shooting light in the food plot. So that's where we put the cell camera. It'll be fun to see in real time. One thing a lot of, I think a lot of people, maybe a couple years ago, maybe not anymore, a little sparring, is the fun thing with cell cameras, and that's what I'm, um, the fun thing with cell cameras is the fact that you can just monitor the activity based on the weather, barometric pressure, the moon phase if you're a moon person, and uh, I think that's probably one of the fun things with cell cameras is you can kind of test your hypothesis in real time. And obviously cameras don't tell you everything, but they'll give you a good idea. And with how this farm's set up, the camera locations are pretty um, pretty accurate. I'm trying to think where this one's at. <laughs> I don't know where the camera came from. <laughs> All right, this one's been rolling around in my truck for a while. <laughs> Got my SD card organizer. Flipped upside down cards on the right side are ones we're going to check here real quick. Okay, so this was where we did a lot of habitat improvements. There's the clover buffer strip that's getting established right now. There's oats in it. And as of right now, I have about three bucks I anticipate I will see on here. A lot of coyotes. So this is a deer I passed during second gun season. More, I mean, there's a lot of coyotes. <laughs> we got him today. This is one that I thought I would see. He's busted up. He's just a short time to eight. And how I planted the trees, I'll find a daylight video here. With how I planted the trees, I wanted to create a new edge and a pinch. So this comes down and then there's a good creek coming, a good trail coming off the creek and wanted to create a new edge interior here and also pinch them down through here. So definitely appears to be working well. I think that's that same buck. This is a good example though, because the overall pop, when you can see there's a lot of does and uh, I almost guarantee there's deer in those, in that backfield every night, but I'm gonna have a couple cameras back there. It's not like I'm trying to have total surveillance, but just kind of see what's going on. This is from a different farm. So that's what we've seen. So we, the two bucks kind of anticipated to see have been back there, not a ton right there. And I'm, just hoping they uh, make it through winter for next year. And this is probably the most anticipated camera here. This is the one that we just pulled that has been soaking for a long time. This is fun. Let's go to, let's go to, we know that deer got killed November 7th. So let's see, November 7th in the morning, not him. So we're working backwards from November now. That is... This is what I was talking about, like the cool background. I think that's a pretty cool video. But that deer that got killed, he wouldn't be on this camera as often during the peak of the rut, but actually last year he was most active during what I'd call the second rut. He was chasing does like December 16th and uh, <clears throat> even Christmas he was chasing does and I had him on multiple cameras. so. Going into the season, I knew there was a chance early, the earlier part of November, and then I actually felt like it would get better the later the year went. 
but he died, which it definitely happens. And the deer I shot was off this farm November 3rd, so I'll be curious if I have any videos of him. That'd be kind of fun. It's crazy just how much difference. Like I was talking about, <clears throat> once all the, everything dies and the canopy's open, in these videos, we were there today, it was just barren. And then in this time of the year, there's so much vegetation and so much cover. I really want to get a video of the deer I shot. That ain't him. That's a nice eight-pointer. You can't tell me that's not a pretty video. <laughs> Look at that, the autumn colors. That's a sweet video. That's probably one of my favorite videos of the whole year. The lip curl. I remember seeing this buck in that bottom plot harassing does. Little sumac right there. <laughs> As me. So I remember doing this. This was in between trips to Iowa, and I came in and put fresh batteries in this camera. It was, I mean, it was super hot. It was 69 degrees on this day, and I went and moved some cameras around, put up some cell cameras on those hot weather days just to make some adjustments. But ironically, did not get a video of the deer I shot, which we had them in velvet earlier in the year. And then there was one other picture over here. And then when I saw him, I was like, my subconscious, like, I definitely know that deer. He's one I determined I'd wanted to shoot. And so just kind of worked out that way. And uh, I was hoping we get a lift two video of him. So yeah, um, did not get the picture, basically did not get the pictures of videos of the two deer I was hoping to get and didn't have a high expectation of getting them on this camera. But as you can see, it's picturesque. Kind of this, uh, a trail cam junkie at heart. Is this the absolute best place to put a camera? No. Does the sun flare the lens at times? Yeah. But then sometimes in the morning, you get some really cool videos. <laughs> so yeah, those are the, the main card pulls. So what I'll do is I'm just throwing these back on this card, and I'll put them on a hard drive later and label them and reference it next year. But that eight-pointer, the two eight-pointers, I think, are still around, and so I'll be curious. And then the other two deer, I think, will be around next year. So that's the fun thing this time of year, just collecting data and kind of reflecting back on the season. And something that... It's very underrated that we haven't talked about that I think Scott Buckley does the best of. So he redeploys a lot of cameras this time of year to find the survivors for next year. And so he does a lot of that on public ground. But um, I think there's a lot to be said about that. Like right now, more than likely, you're a little burnt out on the season or maybe it didn't go how you wanted or maybe you're just thinking that the clock is ticking and you don't have enough time to make something happen. But think ahead and maybe you can find that buck or that giant that you just got a picture of late winter and you can figure out maybe where he's at in the summer and early season and kind of put the piece, pu puzzle pieces together now or at least start with that and get a little bit of a head start. But Scott Buckley, we talked to him on the podcast last year about that. And I, I definitely think it's an underrated tactic for this time of year.